Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm the support group facilitator for Coffee, Tea, and Autism, Fairfield County. And we are a group that was put together by the Autism Society of Central Ohio. And we started our group in um, the middle of 2016. And we based it on a group that started at the Akron branch of the Autism Society. So I was asked if I would um, facilitate a group because we saw a need for it here in our area, um, Fairfield County, Southeast Columbus. Um, before our group, most of the Autism Society events and meetings and everything were taking place up in Delaware, <laughs> where um, a couple of the major uh, uh, team members are from. And uh, people on our side of town were not attending because you can't drive 40, 45 minutes each way you know, all the time. So I was asked if I wanted to do it and I said, sure, I'll do it. So um, I have a son, Tristan, he's here. He's 11 and a half now. He was diagnosed at three and a half. And I got involved with the Autism Society um, in about 2012. Anyway, um, the group itself, we typically, before COVID, we were meeting once a month at, um, Peace United Methodist Church here in Pickerington on Diley on the third Thursday of every month at 6.30 to 8 o'clock. And our meetings are basically a way for, it could be parents or people on the spectrum themselves to get together and connect and talk about our experiences. Um, we provide resources. Um, I try to attend um, various meetings and um, continuing education type things. Um, every year I volunteer at Ocali. Um, by the way, this year I'm actually, um, I actually have a presentation at Ocali Con for the first time and I'm very um, excited and honored about that. Um, so we have resources. Uh, the parents can encourage each other you know, we have parents coming in that are newly diagnosed. They might have a three-year-old and they don't know what to do or where to go. And myself and, and the other parents in the group can then give them advice. Um, we like to talk about everything, you know, from challenges to triumphs. You know, what is something exciting that happened in the last month that your child did? And it could be, you know, potty training or they ate a new food or whatever. And so we like to, yes, my son's been eating new foods, actually. Can you please let Dora out? Sorry about that. Um, so, yes. Uh, <laughs> so we get together and talk as parents. And we also do get some adults that are on the spectrum and they are able to share their experiences. Okay, Tristan, can you please keep it down? Um, but I also like to remind people that even though this is an autism society group, it, the diagnosis does not have to be autism. We welcome any disability. Um, basically, the way I look at it is P come see us for their experience we can share. And so, you know, some of the children might have Down syndrome or cerebral palsy. Um, you know, we've had children in the past with uh, hearing issues or even blind, uh, a variety of different things. So anybody that you service that's, uh, you know, gets services through the Board of Developmental Disabilities is welcome to come at any time. And, um, and we also do encourage if you're a provider and you would like to come and address our group about what you do and how you can help that's always great. We've had meetings in the past about um, things like disability rights. Um, obviously, IEPs are, are big. We all have to deal with that if we have a kid in school. Um, we've had lawyers come and talk to us about setting up, um, you know, trust funds for the future and, and all of that. Um, we've had people from the Board of DD come and talk about waivers because um, that's confusing to everybody 
um, Medicaid and such like that. I've had um, a friend who does yoga come in and teach some basic yoga things that people can do to help relieve stress. Um, every year we do a Christmas party and we have our own Santa and the kids come and they decorate cookies and they do a craft and they get a goodie bag and they get a private meeting with Santa where they get to go into a room alone with him and their family and spend as much time as they need. And um, that's uh, one of the special things that we look forward to every year. We typically do a trunk or treat every year, but that's probably not going to happen thanks to COVID. Um, Easter egg hunt, um, give her a treat please. Mom's night out, dad's night out. We've done bowling with the families, um, lots of different things. And we always tie in with the autism society. And so we always share information of what they have going on, the various events and stuff. Again, right now there's not a whole lot happening because of COVID and you know, this year we missed out on a lot of great things that we had planned that we just had to, you know, let it go. So hopefully next year we'll get back on track. Um, another thing about our meetings that makes us different and very successful is that we provide childcare. And that childcare is provided by the Kiwanis Key Clubs of Pickerington North and Central High Schools. And it's um, high school students in the Key Club and they come to our meetings and they look after the children while the parents meet. And that's been really successful because the children can play together. Um, the key club members enjoy it. They're getting some experience with special needs children. And some of these uh, key clubbers are going on to maybe, they would like to be educators, um, specialize in special needs and things like that. Or, some of them end up being our babysitters. We've even hired some over, over the years to babysit our children. So that's been really great working with them. And um, a lot, you know, in the beginning, the Board of Developmental Disabilities was very involved as well. Um, Julie Brucklemeyer was somebody that helped really get this up and running and off the ground. And we've been very successful. So within the Autism Society of Central Ohio, our group has been the most successful, has the, the biggest turnout, um, most consistent. We have a lot of great families that come to meetings almost every single month. And um, we, we've, really, we've really had a great time and it's a wonderful way to meet new people, parents connect. A lot of us have become good friends now. You know, we go to each other's children's birthday parties and things like that. So um, it's, please, you know, encourage any families you know that have a special needs child to join us when we can get back <laughs> to the church, of course, it will be nice. Um, right now, I'm thinking of maybe doing some Zoom meetings, but it's just not as much fun to do that. So um, for now, I just post things on our Facebook page and share information and things like that. And people are willing, uh, can, can always contact me directly if they have questions that maybe I can help them with. And um, I think that's about all for now. And, and then if there's any questions, just let me know. Okay, guys, um, we have a lot of people on the call today. Do we, does anyone have questions for Sarah? You can unmute. I, I have a question. This is okay. Kyle. Um, I was just wondering, what is kind of the the highest age group of um, the children um, of the parents that attend? Actually, um, I have some parents that attend that have adults' um, okay. children. So it's not just when I say children, I don't just mean, you know, three through 18. Um, there are some that attend that have adults. Great. So. And that's great because they have so much more experience. <laughs> They've been there, done that before all of us. And they are a wealth of, ex uh, wealth of knowledge, when it, especially when it comes to things like IEPs or um, Medicaid waivers and stuff like that. We always welcome anyone that has more experience than we do and can teach us stuff. Thank you. You're welcome.
Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> I have. Oh, I'm sorry, Rachel. You have something on your um, message on the on the chat. You did. Um, Andrea asked, "What's Ocala?" You said you were part of Ocala. Oh, Ocala is um, it is the Ohio Coalition of Autism and Low Incidence. Um, so they have a their headquarters is in Bexley. And every year they have a convention in Columbus in November. And it's one of the world's largest conventions that is specifically about autism mainly, but also other um, disabilities. You'll, you'll see groups there that are um, blind or deaf, um, people with uh, cerebral palsy and things like that. But it mainly focuses on autism. And every year there's a convention right here in Columbus at the convention center. It's usually the week before um, Thanksgiving. Uh, right now offhand, I, I can't think of the dates, <laughs> but uh, they'll have keynote speakers every morning. And then it breaks out into um, groups, separate groups, and they'll have all different um, subject matters. And like I said, this year, um, I was asked to be a presenter of one of, of, for one of the um, talks, and actually it is going to be about how to start a support group and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, probably, I think they usually get about 10,000 people to this convention. Now, this year, for the first time ever, they have to do it online because of, obviously, COVID, again, has ruined everything for everybody. So they, we can't have 10,000 people at the convention center. So they're doing it all online. And um, I can get that information to Rachel and maybe she can share it to everybody because anybody can go, anybody can get involved, whether you're a parent, a provider, a lot of teachers come. I think probably the majority of the people that come to the convention are teachers because a lot of the, um, the breakout sessions that they have are talking about um, things to do in the classroom and handling different situations and whatever. Um, but it's it's really neat and yeah, uh, y'all y'all might be interested in in looking into that for yourselves for more information. Um, it's always great to to learn more, and it's one of the. Uh, greatest ways to get a lot of information within a couple of days. Um, Pam put on here, it's November 11th through the 13th. Oh, uh, there you go. Um, yeah, so I don't know what, well, again, since it's all going to be online this year, I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I believe that I, along with my co-presenter, who is also from the Autism Society, I think we have to make a video and then it will be played at a certain time and then we'll be able to take questions apparently. But I really um, don't know. We're just in the beginning stages of getting ready for that. And I haven't gotten a lot of information about how it's going to work. It's going to be a whole different experience this year. Um, you're not doing Zoom meetings right now, right? Um, someone asked if you're doing Zoom meetings and I, you get them. I haven't been, and like we discussed it yesterday, and it's just because I haven't felt really comfortable with doing that myself. Um, so today is actually a good way for me to kind of get my feet wet and that I've, I've done one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings with my son where we he sees his speech therapist through Zoom, he sees his feeding therapist through Zoom um, back Oh, obviously when school starts next week, he's gonna be <coughs> virtual three days a week, excuse me. <coughs> so I, I think I'm going to try to get that going. And I will let Rachel know if I do. The best way to keep up to date on meetings and changes and things like that is Facebook, correct? Right, yeah, our Facebook group, it's just Coffee, Tea and Autism, Fairfield County. And um, that's the best way. Um, I also have a mailing, an email mailing list, but lately, uh, since we haven't really been doing anything special, I haven't been emailing people, um, but it's just 
coffee, tea, and autism, Fairfield at gmail.com. So that's a good way to direct to directly contact me if um, they don't, some families don't have Facebook. And I've had, and I've also have had various people from the board um, contact me and say, can I have um, a client call you? And, and that's okay too. I don't mind that. If, just as long as you let me know to expect them or they'll say here's their number will you call them um wally asked with all you've experienced through your involvement with autism and the different supports available what do you find is still not supported in other words what would be on your wish list of supports or resources well, that's a good question <laughs> because in a lot of ways, a lot of things aren't supported. I feel like most people when they get the diagnosis aren't given enough information. And I, I think it needs to start with the physicians. Whoever is diagnosing a child with autism needs to then maybe give them a list of here's things to do, places to contact. Um, I wasn't given that. Our child was diagnosed in Florida, and when, and our physicians that diagnosed him didn't really give us much support. They just kind of said, threw us out in the world and just basically said, um, you know, have him get speech therapy. Other than that, I didn't really know what else to do. So when I came, when we moved to Ohio from Florida, when Tristan was three and a half, I was lost. I called I looked, I Googled, and I found the Autism Society of Central Ohio here in Columbus, and I called them, and I said, look, I don't know what to do for my child. Can you help me? And they put me in touch with a few other mothers, and that's where that ball got rolling. And, but one of the mothers made sure to tell me, you have got to go to the Board of Developmental Disabilities and get your kid signed up right away, right away. <laughs> I'm very stressed to that. So you guys are always um, one of the first things I tell newly diagnosed families. If, if you haven't done this already, you need to do it now um, because you guys are always a wealth of information. Um, but yeah, overall, Columbus, I think is great because we do have some great organizations here in Columbus to help people, but I still, I think there's still so much more we could all be doing and I don't even know where to begin <laughs> sometimes. It's, it's frustrating. I wish there was more peer, I wish there was more support for the children. I mean, we try through the Autism Society, but I wish there was more um, places for children to go where they could interact with each other, you know, besides like our meeting once a month. Um, and I guess just getting the information out there more readily available and it has been a challenge too. Social media is always great, but not everybody is on social media. So, but I think maybe, or even schools, you know, if schools know that their kid, is, if here's a child that's on an IEP for, aut for autism, then maybe they could present a package to the parents with, here's some ideas, here's some, some local courses and stuff because sometimes we don't even hear from parents until our children are maybe closer to eight nine or ten they've already been diagnosed for several years but they really still didn't know where to go or what to do so um, I think you know we all need to help get that information out as quickly as possible after diagnosis I think that's all. <laughs> we would agree with that too. We're working on trying to get some more information out to the schools so that when kids are younger, you know, they have those resources and they can start there and grow up and, you know, change the way people view those things a little bit differently. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. And, and maybe getting more information into the schools now, um, when my son was in fourth grade, a fellow autism parent contacted me and said, um, 
her son's school, which at the time was Sycamore Creek Elementary, wanted to do a presentation about autism for Autism Awareness Month and had asked if she could help, you know, get a speaker in to talk to um, the students. And yeah, his, my son's friend Trey. And so she contacted me and I put together a presentation and she helped me with it, you know, um, but I, I wrote the presentation and we went in and we met with the, all of the fourth grade students and gave a, a very interactive presentation about autism to see, to, to give them an explanation as to what it is and to find out what they knew. And it was amazing to me how many of the kids knew somebody on the spectrum, they would say, oh, I have a brother or a sister, or a cousin or a friend. Um, and that was very helpful. And I would love to see all of the schools at some point in the year do a pre some sort of pre presentation on, and, and not necessarily just autism, but autism and other disabilities would be great. I don't think there's enough um, information shared with the neurotypical students on how to interact with students that have special needs or um, more inclusion, I guess, is what I would be looking for. And just more understanding of, you know, for the students. Uh, we've had all good luck. Kids have always been great with, um, Tristan, he's always had a couple of kids in his class that take them under their wing and look after them, but not all kids are, are that lucky. And we've never had any experiences with bullying or anything, but, you know, never say never. It could have been. So I think that's something that it would be great if we could work with the schools and try to get something going, you know, where once a year maybe we do a, a day where we come in and, you know, whether it be you know, the Board of De Developmental Disabilities, the Autism Society, maybe a couple other groups and do like a little um, presentation of some sort to the students. Tristan, <laughs> what are you doing to the cat? Oh, okay. Uh, anyway. Um, I had another question um, from Deshay, looking to bring childcare in the area to include developmental disabilities. What is the best way and what would you like to see with that? As far as like um, things like babysitting, is that what you mean? No, well, it doesn't. Or he means so. The Shay, you can unmute and um, clarify that. Hi. Hello, can hi. you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Now I don't hear her. More so, more so um, of child care because from the families that I speak with, that is a huge, huge need in the area. So just trying to figure out what's the best way to go about doing that one and what would families like to see um, in a center such as that? Right. Oh, so like a center-based child care you're talking about? Yes, yes ma'am. Right. Well, I think it would just be, it would be great for parents to know what centers around the area are equipped to handle special needs children because not all are. So maybe there needs to be some training programs possibly put in place where if they can, uh, so that they would be able to accommodate special needs. And especially, you know, with autism where you have children that have maybe some destructive behaviors, maybe they lash out or, you know, people need to know how to handle that properly so that they don't get hurt and the child doesn't get hurt or other children get hurt. I've heard from other parents that, you know, maybe their kid's been kicked out of this daycare or in this daycare because they did that sort of thing. They, they maybe, yeah, maybe they lashed out at another child or hurt somebody. Um, so, okay, Tristan, not right now. Um, so yeah, that would be helpful. Maybe there's a way to, to put together some sort of training program, you know, that uh, various daycares could qualify for. And then 
let us know what, who can we recommend to our parents because yes, that is a, a huge issue. I mean, I haven't worked for eight years because before, you know, when, when we first moved here, Tristan was going to preschool and it was only four days a week for a couple of hours a day. We couldn't trust anybody. We couldn't trust just anybody to take him in and take care of him. And, um, and then over the years, it just has kind of stayed that way. I mean, now I would trust him with a, a provider of some sort, but we don't, we just don't need to do that. But that was a big thing that kept me from working was we didn't feel comfortable leaving him in anywhere other than school. Sarah, I've been working with a, a work group that's specifically targeting just that issue. Um, okay. And I'll, I'll send you some more information, but you might be a good person to add to that group to kind of ask questions of because it kind of got to a halt because of COVID, but we had been talking to some of the local, um, even home child care that would um, that weren't taking kids with disabilities because they were they needed the training so we were working on getting a group together to figure out those trainings and make that work so I would like to send you some more information about that too yeah that would be great okay let's see do I have any other questions I don't think that I missed anyone in the chat if I missed you you can unmute um, I think I got everyone Good. Those are good questions. Does anybody else have anything else? No. <laughs> okay, let's see. Nope, I don't see anybody. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for being on today and presenting all that information. Um, I think most of the people at the board know how to get a hold of you. And if you guys don't okay. and you want to, you can you can get with me and I can give you Sarah's information later too. And like she right. said, she's on Facebook. Um, on the coffee, tea, and autism page. Um, so I think that covers everything. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thanks.